Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is time for a little bit of group chat. Woo! Who's ready? Let's go. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, a lot of news. We're talking IPOs. We're talking clubs in the metaverse. Um, we're talking, you know, stocks having some trouble. Uh, we're talking about a shortage. There's a lot of shortages. But there's one particular shortage, I'd say mainly in New York, um, that's really alarming. And I think we need to bring up. Um, and I also think we need to address, uh, you know, we've talked about it a little bit, but the crime, the crime wave in LA, we, uh, you know, we just have some updates and we're starting to hear the feedback from our audience. And uh, for better or for worse, it sounds like traffic might be getting a little lighter soon. <laughs> some people um, are blaming us. Some people are blaming us. So look, all we're trying to do is keep you informed. We are a true crime series based on whatever happens every day in LA. Fine and people. And we have endless content. On both sides of the crime. I don't know about that exactly. <laughs> this might this might not apply on that one. <laughs> um, okay, everyone ready? Let's Woo. go. Let's do it. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. All right, so I guess the news is don't move to LA. Every- <laughs> We were hyping up LA for all these years. Hide your wife, hide your kids. <laughs> we were LA's number one, number one advocate, and now it sounds like our podcast is um, is turning people off from potential. Yeah, moves. we have firsthand accounts of genuine fear to moving to Los Angeles because of the number one podcast in the world, Group Chat. I mean, I was thinking of us number one to be the, the number one crime podcast in the world. <laughs> Wasn't crime the original thing that took podcasts off? Yeah, it's still the number, the number one genre is still crime. crime. The non-case, right? Serial. Yeah. We could do a we could do a serial every 15 every seconds. Week. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> Joe <laughs> just went Today, four dead in Beverly Hills, three <laughs> dead in Studio City. <laughs> yeah. Four, four, it's every day. So what happened? One of you guys, did one of you guys say you started following the Instagram account that posts all the crimes? Yeah, I started following it. And Street people of Los Angeles. I can't even follow that. I, I probably wouldn't and leave my I house. And I think they have are doing the work that Citizen was doing. So during the pandemic, all we saw in Citizen was like, you should never leave your place. Yeah. And then Dee pointed out the before that we started recording that they stopped reporting crime. Or I don't know if that. I, Why do you think that is? You think that's well, like look, a look, that's <laughs> liberal no, owned? I don't. I actually don't think it's liberal owned, and I don't think. I'm just saying, AOC denied denied so the crime. I, I don't know if um, what they're doing, but it definitely like I went. On, I literally re-downloaded Citizen over the weekend, and you know I've been. Yeah, Peaceful. I mean, it didn't. It didn't seem like. Obviously, I don't really care anything outside of like three blocks of my house. So I'm not looking at what's happening yeah. a mile away because unfortunately it doesn't affect me. Um, so it no. it felt quiet and I, I, it did look, and then a friend of ours posted, hey, this doesn't look right. Like there's a lot more action happening. Is citizen not reporting it? Are citizens not reporting the crimes? Are they just fed up? Because it's a crowdsourced app. So right. maybe, I, I have a feeling a lot of people also deleted it because they're like, dude, this is, Everyone says Citizen gives them panic and anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that piece. And then you follow these accounts. I can't even watch these videos. It freaks me out. I, I, I don't even want to watch. Yeah. It, it's very alarming that I think this is across metropolitan areas. Every morning, any group chat you're in, we obviously live in LA. So most of our friends are LA based. It's just crime. Well, I mean, look, uh, it's it's not it's not that it's crime; it's that there's fear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, sure. So, so I don't like. It's now the topic. Every conversation with people is they're fearful. They're fearful, and like you know, uh, my watch or this car, or you know, we're not doing this tonight, or we're not going here. And I think that is a really, really scary thing because. Once behavior starts shifting because of fear, there's like domino effects that we can't even think of that 
our community will have. And and to be fair, it's not just an LA thing. We're in LA, so we care about of course, LA. Yeah. It's happening in New York. It's happening in Chicago. It's happening in Miami. It's happening in San Francisco. It's happening, I mean, Austin. It's happening in every major city. There's just a surge in crime. I think that the, the, the frustrating part about what's happening in LA and no fault of ours that Gascon was on our podcast. <laughs> we get so much yeah, shit, man. <laughs> it's every day. Yeah. I think- you I'm weren't on that, on that episode, episode. but yeah. every day I boycotted. Yeah. D and I, and yeah, yeah, D and I just get blown up. We ruin the city. We ruin Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So, yeah, that's fair. I think so, you guys so, did. I tried to and, tell you. And what's interesting is I was talking to a uh, Uber driver in Miami with my friend Mikey, and he was telling about a horrific incident that happened in Miami, and then we were telling him about what's happening in LA, and you know, we were just having a discussion. I'm like, the intention of what uh, Gascon was doing, I think, meant well. It's just not being executed correctly at all. No, of course and not. and the problem is, is like, I think so. There was a recent news that there was a, a smash and grab at Nordstrom in the Grove, right? Grove, Grove Topanga, Topanga Mall. Yeah, that's just going to be a trend. They so, figured so, it out. So, so that was fourteen people got arrested. And for those that don't live in LA, the Grove is the most trafficked um, shopping area in the entire area, entire LA. Just insane amount of people all the time. And fourteen people arrested, and they were subsequently released within twenty four hours, and no crimes were charged. On uh, no bail. On uh, no bail. And so that doesn't give uh, uh, people confidence that like this is stopping. And so it'd be interesting to see like one, he's going to get recalled 100%. They, they now become. You think? Cause Gavin Newsom wasn't even close. So, so I think, I think this, cause here's the thing is like fundamentally at that moment, there was nothing wrong with California and there wasn't a viable candidate. Now specifically in LA, there's this groundswell movement of people that are frustrated and they're going to get the, they're going to get the, uh, they raise the money. Now they have to get the signatures. I think it's however many hundreds of thousands of signatures. I think that's going to happen in like two days. And then election would be November, 2022. So that's the thing is like, if well, the- that's how broken the city oh, is, no. right? If you have citizens of a city that in the vast majority are saying this guy is causing crime to escalate we have to wait a year yeah <laughs> so good luck the next year yeah. the majority of people are saying we don't want him anymore yeah guess what for one year <laughs> buckle up it's the purge yeah, and, and and i think it's literally the purge for a so, year aoc did you guys see what aoc what? said and she said a lot of these allegations of organized retail theft are not actually panning out I believe it's a Walgreens in California cited it, but the data didn't back it up. That's crazy. Look, I think that there's also, we're still in this phase of like, which is so weird to me, but like, it seems like Democrats aren't, like they're just not accepting yeah. it. Mm-hmm. it like well, they're just, it's like almost like so, Trumpish. Like you're, it's like, well, oh, I that's, don't know. That's where I actually have a problem. Um, it's a podcast that I've talked about forever. The Pod Save America guys, they live in LA. It's undeniable it is significantly more unsafe today than it was before Gascon. Yeah. They were big on Gascon. Okay. They were big on. So what are they saying? Yeah. They're not addressing it. Yeah. So it's a drama's point. That's the move. That's why. Well, same thing. Eric yeah. Garcetti had a press conference and said, he said to the citizens to be more aware and be more, don't look at your phone. Yeah. His advice was be worried if you're getting followed, get oh off your devices. God. That's the solution. Get off your devices. Yeah. It's so and, and weird, t- man. It's so weird. And I'll weird. tell you the, the other thing, which is which I think also scary, is talking to a lot of friends, they all went and bought guns. And yeah. I've had a conversation with a few of them, and I said, okay, so you own a gun now. Are you willing to pull the trigger? Because owning one and using one are two different things. And, yeah. and then I said, yeah. like... And, if you aren't willing to do that, then I don't see the purposes of owning it. Cause like you pull that thing out, it's being used. Like it's just. And, and yeah. the, the advice, yeah, exactly. no, and the advice from law authorities <laughs> is it's very clear. Yeah. If you use the gun, make sure the person you shoot is dead. Yes. Cause you don't want 
a, an opposing account. Like, oh, I was just like stumbling into their house and he, I got shot. Yeah. And I think I think that's that's like and I don't think yeah. civilians are prepared for that. I think some are. Some are. Well, well, I think I think the problem is is like it's going to be like the citizens' army is what's going to happen is that there's literally going to be forming, you know, neighborhood militias, militias. and they're going to be like the Beverly yeah, Hills. Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of like people with like rifles on the corner, and they're like, "All right, come in our neighbor, we'll shoot you." I'm actually surprised that hasn't happened. I bet you in in the last week. I bet you they're on text. I, groups. Yeah, I'm 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 telling you. They're yes, ready to I think mobilize. communities are getting organized, and if 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 our uh, elected officials aren't going to do it, the people will force the hands because there's be like fine private security on every corner, dude. Do you know how many patrol cars? I mean, private security patrol cars are in my neighborhood. Every house has one now. Yeah. They're at, twice a night they circle, and and there's like 14 different companies, so it's just all rotating around. Man. And so it's what a time. To yeah, be in that and I business. think I think like. If you don't give people that safety, then it'll go into their hands and then it's going to get ugly. What's shocking about yeah. the Grove is that is so heavily policed. Yeah. Rick Crusoe doesn't fuck around there. Yeah. There's private security. There's plainclothes security. Oh, there's way there's, more security now because I was there Sunday. And other cops, right? Oh, yeah. Physical yeah. cops. Now so see, yeah. Before they were like undercover because they didn't want they to disrupt the family vibe. Disrupt the family vibe. Now it's like, nah, security, gun. Let's go. But I think the part that we're missing is like, these people aren't scared to get yeah. arrested. That's why it's yeah. happening. Like when you see that one in San Francisco, there was like, it looked like 20 people like scattered in a busy area. They're like, fuck it. If five, five of us go down, you get let out. Who yeah. cares? Who's, who's the DA in San Francisco? Chesa Boudin. And the, it's the same policy? Yeah. Chester the Dean's actually even more being aggressive. Recalled. Yeah, even more aggressive. So Gascon came from San Francisco, the yeah. predecessor to Chester the Dean. Yeah, yeah. So very similar policies, and I think I don't know. I I think the uh, I I think the people are going to force the politicians' hands really, really quickly. Like we're not waiting a year, dude. Do, do you know how many? I, I've spoken to a lot of young women who don't feel fucking safe walking down the street yeah. anymore. Which is crazy. How could There's you? a structural difference between San Francisco and LA, which is why I'm optimistic about LA. San Francisco is 700,000 people. LA is like 12 million people. Yeah. So like you can just leave and, you know, San Francisco's, I was in San Francisco two, three weeks ago. It's an absolute ghost town. There's no one there. No one's left. Yeah. I walked the entire downtown of San Francisco on a Friday morning, did not run into... You couldn't even run into people. There wasn't even a breakfast shop open. The ferry building, which is uh, one of the most tourist uh, attractions in the city, completely empty. The city, they just left. Because think about it. How many people have 700,000 leave to have a noticeable impact? LA, no, people aren't leaving. Yeah. Too many people. Yeah. Where are you, it, you I know. know. I was sitting in traffic all day yesterday. <laughs> so my point is the citizens are yeah, going to- that's true. Somebody yeah. leaves. <laughs> <laughs> the citizens of Los Angeles- I will force the hand of the politicians. Yeah. How long it takes, I don't know. But it'll be someone like a Rick Caruso, who's a very prominent figure in this city. He built the Grove. I believe he's still on the board of trustees at USC. He's a very yeah, powerful. Yeah, he got us Lincoln. Yeah, the guy is Lincoln Riley, which is already a big win. <laughs> he's for already the city. a hero. He can run tomorrow and win just based on that. Lincoln Riley? Yeah. Or, I <laughs> no. mean, Lincoln Riley could be mayor. <laughs> no, I'm saying uh, Rick Caruso can win because he brought Lincoln Riley. Yeah, so I think what will happen is you're going to see all these new politi- new potential people be- want to be mayor and be want to be district attorney. And I think, I mean, if I'm Dr- Gascon, I, you have to think like your career is fucking over if you do not make drastic changes in the next 30 days. If he comes out tomorrow and says, I'm changing my policy, I'm going after everyone. Then fine. Your political career will exist. If it's not, you're done. And he's been noticeably absent. From everything I read, he yeah. has not been He's giving statements. No, he's giving statements. statements, but he's not doing a press conference. Yeah. Get in the fire of journalists. Hey, that's what you do when you're a politician. Yeah. Like, hey, hate him or love him, every U.S. president Sits in front of the press corps. Not so much Joe Biden. Well, not not Biden. Biden. He's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy's <Yeah>. resting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, they really, I, I got to say, like, they, they avoided <laughs> that whole thing. Press conference. 
Trump just nah. the whole part of the job. <laughs> I think Trump just enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, we're gonna Trump take those just enjoyed off. it. Well, he loved the f- ratings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he probably loved it. All right. Well, uh, look. He, yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's talk about some news. Yeah. So, so everyone move. Everyone leave. We're trying to clear up yeah. traffic. And uh, if you're thinking about coming, unless you go to self defense training, <laughs> maybe hold off. I think it should be a. You should have to go do like five lessons with our boy over at ITAC uh, that we had on about self defense, and before you can move to LA, his business must be booming. Booming. Nobody's saying. Um, hey guys, uh, you want to talk about Liquid IV for a second? It would be great. I feel like this is the time of year that we have to be extra hydrated and take care of ourselves. Why is that? Because we're drinking a lot? Well, holiday parties, people are getting yeah. sick. And you know, nobody's washing their hands anymore. Is that over? Yeah, I mean, I went oh, the other over. day somewhere. I was like, do you have any hand sanitizers? They're like, no. Why would I have that sanitizer? Yeah, it's long gone. Your best bet, stay hydrated, hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's over. Um, I mean, but yeah, I, think- I, I mean, literally, this is the, I would say the, you know, I, I think we we work with companies that we actually use on this yes. podcast, but Liquid IV is literally like a daily use for me. Yeah, I mean, I use it either before or after any long workouts, I definitely use it before a night of boozing. And um, honestly, it's such an easy thing. And the flavors are incredible. Like all their new flavors, they taste so good. Actually, when we all had a a stomach bug a few weeks ago, the whole family was drinking liquid IV. Mm. Yeah. Just flush that thing out. Flush it out. And now you can get all of your favorite liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart. I'm a big watermelon guy. Watermelon. Okay. By the way, I live. I don't live near a Walmart, so I use something called the interweb. You coastal elite. (laughs) Yes. Coastal elite. Is that part of the metaverse? In the metaverse, you can go to the Walmart and buy Liquid IV. In the real world, you go to (laughs) liquidiv.com, use the code group chat, and get 25% off. How do you stay hydrated in the metaverse? Uh, mm. I think you go to the liquid Are there good IV. doctors there? USB cord. Keep your laptop charged. Huh? Yeah, just mm. juice it up. That's all you need. High speed firewire. I want to be a cardiologist in the metaverse. Hmm. I don't think it's a good uh, career path. <laughs> 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 but I will support you if you go that way. Yeah, wasn't the whole discussion um, we had about okay, the metaverse so is infinite? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you never die. Yeah, yeah. This guy's yeah. trying to do repairs on <laughs> yeah. the whole thing. Is you're, you you live forever? <laughs> um, okay, go check it out. Liquid IV code group chat. Let's get back to the episode. Okay, news time. So we talked about this a little bit um, on the last episode, but stock, you know, the IPOs uh, that have not panned out so well in 2021 um, in the tech world. We've had a handful of some tough yep. ones. So it, who do we got? Who, who are we calling out? Well, exactly? here's the thing. Um, of the more than 50 U.S. tech companies to go public this year through an IPO, SPAC, or direct listing, only one is less than 20% below its high stock price. More than 20 of the companies in the group have lost at least half their value from their highs. And then, so when we start going down the list, Robinhood from its peak is down 74%. Didi, which is getting delisted, which is wow. the Uber of China, is getting delisted because they're keeping it private, uh, is down 63%. UiPath, I don't even know what that is. They're down 50%. Toast, they're toast. They're down 47%. Coinbase is down 39%. Affirm is down 37%. Rivian is down 30 for 35%. Even Roblox, which is on absolute fire, is down 20%. I, no, I looked at the Roblox chart. I think that's the exception. They pop so much um, after earnings. So I, think I think it's off their high. They're still off their high. I don't think so. I looked at the chart tra- right before we were recording. But yeah, yeah, it is. It's 141. It's at 115. Oh, maybe the post earnings pop. Yeah. I'm but saying that, was, that was like a yeah. 70%, yeah. you know, 24 hour, uh, you know, 
so, so increase. like uh, what, what I think is what's happening is, and we talked about it also, um, a lot of the fast growing tech companies have also compressed in terms of valuations. That's also expected. The growth they had last year was like unprecedented. And so that's all of those things are taking place. The IPOs were just overvalued companies to begin with. Yeah, they started off an inflated base from the private markets yeah. and then got the public market pop. So it's, it, it's a, a tad misleading because I also think the combination of having an inflated private market value is that everyone's pricing in inflation. Everyone knows rates are going up. And so when rates go up and inflation happens, growth stocks get hit. Yeah. And I mean, to say investors haven't priced that in, given that most growth stocks are down like 30 to 50% in the last four to five months, like clearly it's been priced in. So, yeah. which is healthy and great companies that will succeed over the long term will be worth a lot more. So, you know, I, I don't think there's any worry. I think Retail Joe just got hammered. That's that's the real like well, well yeah R.I.P. I didn't know we killed this son of a bitch um, <laughs> I think we posted a graveyard of retail Joe <laughs> poor guy yeah we did, we did. <laughs> but yeah this Man. is this is part of the cycle like well what's interesting is is the gro- like your your sexy names are the ones that got crushed and where there's the f- the money is going the flight to safety call it is in fucking Apple Microsoft Google mm-hmm. Apple 52 week high, $171 a share, $2.8 trillion valuation. It is going to hit $3 trillion probably the, by the end of this year. Yeah. And Apple basically, like, if I'm a mega, mega investor, like, I have to deploy hundreds of billions of dollars of cash, wouldn't you rather own Apple, Microsoft, and Google than a fucking bond? Absolutely. So if you, tr- I, the way I think about it is like- And because, I mean, think about how liquid those companies- 2.8 trillion. Yeah. You I can, mean, all of crypto is like 2.4 trillion. This fucking company is 2.8. Yeah. And, and Microsoft and Google, they have cash on their balance sheet, unlimited cash on their balance sheet. No signs of their businesses slowing. I mean, I, by the way, talk about, uh, I went to the Grove on Sunday. I w- they just built the most beautiful- Apple store there. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I haven't. The ceilings are taller no. than our, you know, however many story building this is, 20 stories. It's that, it's the fucking tallest. Where did it take over? What uh, space? Crate and Barrel. Wow. That's next to Nordstrom? Uh. Yeah. I mean, by the way, you walk into the store. First of all, there's 500 people taking a picture of the damn thing and posting the picture of the store. Then you walk in. Wow. There are so many people. Every fucking device someone is on these people are looking at the iphone like they've never played with one and then i saw a a woman from japan that was live streaming it to her fans saying like i'm in the apple store at the grove like i was like this lady is literally live streaming basically giving them a free commercial to i don't know if she's famous or not but she was live streaming it and so I look at these companies, I see why, like, if you're deploying a ton of capital, why would you take your risk on Twilio when, fuck it, just give Apple, Apple can double in the next five years? I think I said this six months ago when we saw peak valuations in growth stocks, that they were getting priced that they're the next to Amazon, Facebook, and Google. Why do you want to find the next Facebook, Amazon, and Google when they already exist? Yeah, and I, would put, I wouldn't put Facebook in that, in that category. Because I, I think they are going to have headwinds. But but you know what I mean, Fang. Yeah. yeah. Well, now it's Mang. Oh, because they don't include... <laughs> it's actually Because Facebook is meta. Mag. Oh, you're right. What up, Mang? Yeah. <laughs> what up, Mang? But yeah. Microsoft's not included. I agree. I mean, I just can't believe... Microsoft's it. not part of Fang. And they've literally... Obliterated gone, everybody. They've obliterated everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah so I think... Stupid. I just can't believe it's been that bad. I mean, I can't believe those numbers. Robinhood like, has really terrible. gotten no, but th- th- this is this is the healthy correction in the cycle. Is that over the next course yeah. of three to five years, which growth stocks are real? Which growth stocks will have, you know, 70 percent year over year growth? They will get rewarded. There's no question about it. Yeah. You have to find which ones are worthy of being the next multi hundred billion dollar companies, if not much. Mu- 
multi-trillion. Like Robinhood, which was, you know, pre-IPO, you know, privately probably trading at like $50 billion, is now a $19 billion company. Yeah. And and even today, the stock went up on the speculation that they may list Shiba Inu. That is where this company is at. <laughs> okay? They, if they don't list oh Shiba, they fucking stock will go oh, down. Man, man. Their only hope for the, this next quarter is to list that fucking stock. Yeah, I mean, and I, I but I'm not going to sit here and, I mean, uh, growth stocks, there are going to be some massive home runs. Of course, we don't know winners. what they are yet. Yeah, you, you have to find, believe in a founder, believe in, you know, whatever uh, mission they're building and believe that they have some sort of moat. Okay, and Vlad, what do you think about Vlad? Loser. I still think Robin it's a home run. <laughs> then, then it's a steal at yeah. this price. That's what I'm saying. You can. There's going to be hedge funds that come in and just triple down right now. Yeah. D, are we okay. still holding Apple? Stock? Right, well, you know who I would we triple are. down on. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is, is that you know, I think we bought it at 121, so we're up 50. percent <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? What do we do? What D, D and I are still holding Apple stock. Yeah, we bought. Oh, yeah. zoom out! Oh, I yeah. forgot. Throw, throw Good back. for you It'll guys. Two I years, think we put a thousand bucks or up 50%. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, just think about that. Like, that is the safest bet. Yeah. That's insane. 50%. Yeah. Well, consider your downside risk is so limited. Yeah. Wait, because what's Apple, Apple get would never go down 50%. No. And I mean, from what I saw, upside. like, Apple should go up 100%. The way people are live What's, what's uh, is it tourists that want to see the Apple store? Like we all are Apple everything. What? I ran into two people in the store. What are you buying? They're buying I think Apple even if you're shit. from like small town. No, but what yeah. are you guys buying? Me? I think I just wanted to see the store. They had live trees in the store. Like 50 trees. D was, D was yeah, live streaming. Live streaming. <laughs> but like people are like <laughs> playing around with the iPhone 13. I'm like, look in your fucking palm. It's the same thing. Yeah, Idiots. that's what I'm trying to understand. What I'm trying to wrap my head around. It's so easy to buy online for Apple. Of any of the, you know, companies that have retail, what's the experience you're getting? You know the product's phenomenal. You know why people, people, people it, in that environment, you're buying a luxury good. Apple is a luxury brand, okay? when If you're buying a Chanel handbag, you want to buy in the Chanel stores. For most people, that this is the luxury item they own. So they want to go to the store, have the dork in the blue shirt help you out and give you that fucking bag. You want that whole thing. And you want to yeah. go, you want to get ripped That's off true. and buy the $60 case. You want to get taken to the fucking cleaner and then when you that 300 person. on the AirPods. Yeah. And you guys spend yeah. 300 on the AirPods. And then you go wait your fat ass to, for get ice cream. Because I saw all these people. It was crazy. So Dominic <laughs> wanted ice cream. Let me tell you about my talking about West Hollywood. <laughs> you saw all the Apple store yes, people. Yes. So... There is an ice cream, like a haagen or one of those places. In the right? middle, right? In the middle. Yeah. There's also a press juicery right next door. Okay? 10 feet away. Press nah. juicery does a, like a, a frozen yogurt. Obviously, less sugar, cleaner, healthy, whatever. Dominic was insistent he wants ice cream. So we're like, great. Let's go to press. No line. We'll get it in two, literally 30 seconds. With the toppings. They have all the junky toppings of everything. Then you look at the Hagen Dazs line and there's like 14 people waiting. <laughs> God forbid there's an ounce less sugar. <laughs> and then they go wait an hour oh in valet. God. No problem. What are you, they're waiting an hour to oh, self-park. Yeah, they're self-parking. You can't even find parking spots at the Grove during holiday time. Zero yeah. chance, right? Unless you valet. Yeah. No, valet's it's so full. You can't even valet. It's crazy. But, you know, they go... So, so it's just slammed. Every store, every, every I everything. didn't go into many stores. Like, the stores you expect, like, uh, what's the doll store? American Girl, whatever, Palace, I think it's called. Place. That place is slammed. Nike yeah. has to be slammed. Nike. Nike looked, honestly, like a store from 1985 compared to that Apple store. I, I, we, we walked by Nike. I was like, uh, dated. They're in the metaverse. Yeah. Really? They should... Yeah, they're focused yeah, on Yeah, because that store didn't feel special after walking out of the Apple store. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you wonder who else is focused on the metaverse? Our good buddies over at yeah. the Hagewood Group. A lot impressed this weekend. Uh, these guys, while they're in Miami, 
uh, celebrating in the real verse, um, there's all this press that comes out that they are aiming to be the first nightclub in the metaverse. Looks like they... You got the inside scoop? It's funny. I was with them for four days and didn't mention it once. <laughs> they didn't mention it? <laughs> well, I think when you're like in Miami, you just you don't think about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We definitely didn't talk about metaverse. Um, but they're partnering with uh, Looks Rare Studio and Sounds Rare Studio and building a, a metaverse nightclub. And I, I have this is complete speculation. I've not talked to them about it, but... I think the way like their business could work is like take Bootsy Bellows. Like you need to own the NFT to even have a shot at getting into the nightclub. Right. And if you, if you want a reservation at Delilah, you should have the NFT. Like you, you can create like these little communities of all your properties. And I think this could go for a lot of people like four seasons or, Amon group, like especially luxury brands, which they are like, how do you create this exclusivity through your, through your digital presence that gives people access? Like if you're a Bootsy Bellows NFT holder, they do a Super Bowl party. They do a Coachella party and they do, let's say Monaco Grand Prix party, right? Like those are three parties they'll do or fashion week party. Only way you could get into those parties. If you don't know them is by being an NFT holder. I mean, it makes sense. You might get a lot of doors. Yeah, so though. I think here's one layer of like that. Is, Hadid, I think you, know? you have to get whitelisted to even own the NFT. Send us your picture. It's like Raya. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dude, it's like <laughs> you're a dork. Sorry. Just good old fashioned discrimination. I mean, almost every members club <laughs> ask you, country club ask you, I know, school. Just, you applied yeah. for a school. They're like, put a picture of your fucking kid. And you have to go interview, right? Yes. <laughs> they want to see what your kid looks like. Yeah, you got a crazy interview. looking kid. <laughs> if you yeah. have an ugly kid, yeah. they'll deny you. I think they will also want to like know the race. People will claim crazy shit. Oh, I'm Native American. You know if you're Native American, you can get in anywhere. All right, let's see what your Native American kid looks like. Don't you think that the north <laughs> yeah. of 40-year-old person is just like kind of screwed in the way the world's going? No, because if you got money, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, they just make that's the exception. That's a great... Yeah. He's actually have a great story. Um, an A-list actor that um, wanted to place uh, work with the person we know who runs a book. And we all gamble on this book. It's very easy. Just go on a site. Yeah. You look at the odds. You press two buttons. Everyone who listens to this podcast have gambled online. Yeah. It's easy. It's very easy. It's two, three clicks and your bet's done. Moron can do it. This A-list actor texted this person we know that runs a book and just old fashioned, what's the line? Here's how much I want. And uh, what refused to go on the site? Wow. How old is this guy? Uh, 53. That's pretty bad. That's more a function of his being an actor than Hollywood. He's just like everyone's he's tampered. tampered. Yeah. yeah. Like if we told our mom, yo, go put yeah. two G's on the Lakers, <laughs> she'll figure she'll, it out. She'll know how to put two G's on the Lakers. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Plus, I feel like this this gentleman that you're speaking of isn't, uh, I mean, for the sake of, I think, your initial question, he's not missing out on <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, he, he walks up to gonna, Bootsy yeah. Bellows, so letting his ass in. Yeah. <laughs> he's not like, yeah, he's not like, oh, damn, I wonder what's going on. The with metaverse. The, the metaverse. <laughs> yeah. So there's just exceptions to the yeah, metaverse. For in real life. Yeah. Yes. Like really good looking people and rich people. I think us. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think we'll go on to have a great rest of our lives, probably trying to figure out ways to do business in the metaverse, but we're not strapping on goggles <laughs> yeah. every night. And we're going to have a great, you know, we're going to have a fun yeah. time in the real birth. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I think, uh, I think if you're, I think if you're like ferocious, you know, and like uh, super young, you gear up for making sure you have the right connections. Make sure you get into Bootsy verse. Like, do you have to go? Make sure like, you, got you it show all up handled. to the Bootsy metaverse, and there's like a there's the avatar of Parker saying no to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like you get to yeah. the door and be like, God, ah, no, nah, look what you're wearing here, bro. Like your digital yeah, he outfit like is not going to work in here. Getting denied at a yeah. nightclub is the, definitely the most humbling thing in the world. It's the worst. <laughs> There's nothing more humiliating than getting turned down at a nightclub. Because they're so dismissive. Yeah. Yes. They're like, you really think you're coming in here? Yeah, I remember when I was in New York City years ago, like when I first went there like to go to a nightclub, and the way the guy treated me 
was so it was intentional. Oh, yeah. They yeah, wanted yeah. to make you feel bad. He made me feel like I was insignificant and I felt that way. Yeah, because think about it. When you get <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, when you get it's it's very effective. I was like, all right, I gotta step my fucking game up. When you get denied at a nightclub, <laughs> it's so humbling because you you walk away <laughs> from getting denied and then you everyone just, sees you. Everyone sees you, and then you end up at a shitty bar yeah. having a drink. Like, man, yeah. I just got yeah. embarrassed. Yeah. Because it's I mean, think about it, like as an adult in America, it's probably the only place where you can get shit <laughs> yes. on that hard. Openly, just based on your looks your or outfit. your income, yeah. or your yeah. but then con- not even income really. I conversely, mean, getting into it's a literally hot- like outfit. Conversely, and look. getting into a hot- best <laughs> feeling ever. <laughs> yeah. You're like, like fuck I- you, you <laughs> ugly motherfuckers! I'm walking right by you. <laughs> <laughs> Goes both ways. <laughs> oh, that's life, man. That Behind is life. the velvet robes, the motivation to work. Yeah, hard. I mean, like, I wonder how much motivation has come from. You know, denial or or access at night. Dude, I I'm, I'm sure Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg is probably the reason why I created Facebook. Yeah, he probably well, didn't get into yeah. a party. Well, I mean, that's the social network. If yeah. you believe the movie, it's that he felt like he was an outsider. Yeah, that's. I think that's yeah. most successful people. They felt like they were. They got motivated by a social occurrence. I mean, that's certainly crypto. Yeah, I the early guy. crypto guys were the biggest outcasts. In- yeah, they yeah they still are. <laughs> <laughs> they just have a lot of money now. No, the rich ones get <laughs> yeah. in now. Well, yeah. The rich ones are, yeah, because it's unlimited oh, money. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, next up. What's up with uh, BuzzFeed? BuzzFeed uh, went public and not good. Well, I mean, not good yeah, so I mean, far. I think it, it follows kind of the most recent IPO. So BuzzFeed owns Huffington Post. Yeah. They bought Complex for $300 million. So it's a it is like a media media business that honestly if you look about, if you think about like the importance of these publications I actually think it's a pretty valuable property and I think there's a lot of things that have come out of that whether it be TV shows movies and I'm sure tons of video content I actually am kind of bullish on the business longer term as long as they stay co- was it just price too high I, I think it's just it's it's a media business so it's priced to media multiples and and you know I, I think the SPAC pricing was at one and a half billion. It dipped and it's uh, I mean it's still probably north of a billion total. And I think it is one of those businesses if executed could be extremely valuable. Like eyeballs on the internet are worth a shitload of money. And I would argue Complex yeah. is probably the most valuable of the three because BuzzFeed feels a little hacky to me. Like they're a growth hack, whereas Complex has like loyalty yeah. and like has like real life kind of engagement. Um, so I, I think I, 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 it'll, be, it's, it'll be up to the leadership on how they execute it and how they put money and how they focus these things. But uh, a great win for everyone involved. I mean, Complex started, I remember vividly, we were 5-4, the year 5-4 started, Complex started, and we were the, one of the, we were in the first issue, our t-shirt was, and we were, everyone was like, oh, it's the new magazine that Mark Echo helped start. And they became such a cultural force. And then even just going to Complex Con a few weeks ago, I mean, it's still more relevant than ever. Thousands of kids. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. what happened with this one is, so in SPACs, people back a sponsor, and then you have the right to withdraw when the acquisition is announced. What the SPAC is actually buying. So 94% of the capital withdrew on this SPAC. That's the problem with SPACs. There's zero um, regulation. Zero downside. If you have excess capital and you're just like, you, you clip warrants, even if you don't fund the deal. So in a way, it's free money. It's the way, you know, all those guys got to make so much money on SPACs and 2020. Yeah. And it's, I mean, SPACs have, to say SPACs have fallen out of favor is an understatement, but, you know, it's tricky. Yeah, there's like a SPAC curse, man. I just, I don't, can you explain to me, like, why, like, why wouldn't BuzzFeed just go public? Like, what, what, why is a SPAC appetizing? Quick and easy. And for the most part, in the last two years, if you look at the names, it was just a backdoor to getting pub- going public. 
it just seems to me like it's something that you would do if maybe you couldn't go public or maybe it wouldn't go well like the real way. But like, it seems like BuzzFeed could have went through the real process. Well, BuzzFeed had multiple down rounds. So they were worth well over a billion at one point. I think Andreessen led a few rounds and they weren't worth that in the last couple of years. But I think it's also a problem with just that form of media. I mean, all of us who have been in our, our brands that have spent money on media, it's pay to play. Yeah. So if you want a BuzzFeed article written about yeah. five, four young and reckless winners, you pay enough money. There'll be like a 16 things. Yeah. 13 reasons why you should <laughs> fucking sign up for Menlo Club. Yeah. 25 grand. Yeah. And that, I think. <laughs> zero, zero yeah, response. I think that the <laughs> user has figured that out. Yeah. Which is why like some writers on Substack have like blown up because yeah. it's just real content yeah. versus we know we're getting manipulated as a user if you're in BuzzFeed yeah. or any of these platforms. And I think you just, just got smart to it. Yeah. That's probably right. Okay. I do Maybe. enjoy a good BuzzFeed list. Uh, yeah, they do. do 73 lists. reasons why you should. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those lists we talk about yeah. come from Always. there, right? So we're manipulating saddest cities yeah. in America. 14 fattest people in America. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My uh, okay. Uh, let's talk about 100 Thieves. You know, 100 Thieves, the old gaming team, um, raised $60 million in their Series C, which brings the company's valuation to $460 million US dollars. Impressive. Not yeah. bad. Not bad for a game team. It's great. I mean, look, I think they see it's pretty much them and FaZe Clan, who's also spacking it up, um, are the two companies that are kind of uh, leading the charge in terms of potential big um, uh, exits. Um, 100 Thieves uh, said year-over-year growth was over 111%. So sounds at least the business is growing really fast, but it's a half a billion dollar valuation. You got to live up to that. So high expectations. I mean, the next step for them is probably going public as well. Um, Because at this valuation, like, I don't know what the appetite is in the private market to keep bidding it up. But in the public market, they probably have, they probably have such a big following from a culture standpoint that like it can be something uh, that could actually catch fire. I was trying to find how much revenue they do, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I don't. I mean, I have no idea. Is there money from, like, essentially, like commissions or? I, or... I, I think their money is from merch. I bet you selling clothes is probably one of their mm. biggest uh, collaborations. Yeah. They do all, you know, Rustin selling keyboards with them with High Ground. And keycaps, like I think, like theirs is going to be products. Don't they act like? Don't they like act as agents for their team members, or is that? I, I think that's uh, more of the Phase Clan model, from what I've heard. I don't know if Got that's it. the same Got model it. as Hundred Thieves, uh, but I think from what I'm hearing from a lot of these esports teams, because we worked with some of them, apparel is a huge part of it. Because I'm just thinking, given. You know, from a young person's perspective, they all have heard of Young A Hundred Thieves, and how frothy the market. It seems kind of light. I mean, I told you about a business the other day, doing fifty thousand a month in revenue, got a three hundred million dollar valuation. SaaS. SaaS. Fintech. Fintech. Oh, that's even better. Do they still sell it? <laughs> oh. We advance you money for your salad. Um, nice. I like that. <laughs> Well, good for these guys. I mean, look, I mean, I, I think definitely with all like, I have to believe that in the world of like the metaverse and that being like the new normal, people like 100 Thieves have to clean up in that. Yeah, so, they, so I think they need to pivot the full meta. you mean be a $2 billion company overnight. I think if they go heavy meta, heavy NFT, heavy digital community, I mean, they should be charging a membership and everyone gets to be a part of the 100 Thieves. It's 1 million Thieves. Why are you limiting it to a hundred? There should be one hundred. Yeah, why are you limiting to only a hundred million dollars each? Billion thieves. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You need NFT, more thieves, meta, dude. Should... If you release an NFT, a billion of them at a dollar, there you go. One billion dollars revenue. I'll tell you what's a hot brand in LA right now: a hundred thieves. 
It was 100 Thieves at the Globe last weekend. It's actually a tough name for this climate. <laughs> what are you guys stealing? <laughs> it's hotter than ever. <laughs> um, yeah, I just feel like it seems to me like the closest thing to, maybe I'm wrong here. It seems to me like the closest thing to the metaverse is the gaming world. So all those guys should just clean house, it seems like. Yeah, I, I actually think they're positioned really, really well. Um, it's just going to be execution. Like some companies are going to do it better than others. Um, I think the positioning, I think in most things in, in culture has to start at the top, like the best brands, the luxury brands, they know how to execute the best. Like if you look at like um, LVMH's execution on... Um, on, for example, collaborations, they do it so, so fucking well. And then it kind of permeated throughout all these different, uh, you know, subcultures. In the case of the gaming world, if they execute these things properly, their brands are going to be so fucking valuable. And the perfect example is this. Tiffany's announced yesterday a, a Patek Philippe collaboration with Tiffany's and Alexander Arnaud, the son of Bernard Arnaud, posted on his thing, don't bother asking me for allocation for the watch. This watch, I don't think it's like able for purchase. Like I literally don't think. Yeah, they just give not. it to their high-end customers? That, I don't think they're giving it to anyone. I think that whatever, the hundred of them are going to sell, they're going to sell for a fortune. I don't know who the fuck Apparently, like, is going to walk around with that watch. <laughs> I mean, don't you, you think... It literally should just it just should just have yeah. a bullseye. On it. Don't you think it's shocking with given where crime is across the country and luxury is hotter than ever? It's like no one's catching the hint. I mean, if you went in in Miami during our Basel, I you know, I see some luxury in LA. Like I'll see a, a watch here and there. I'll see like you know some cheesy person wearing some big logo hoodie, whatever. In Miami, everybody was wearing Burberry, Givenchy, LV, Dior, uh, Rolex. And it's just like, if I get robbed, I get robbed. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the cars, the this. I, I just think like that's a different culture where LA feels a little... Probably a lot of guns. Yeah, so everyone's like, all right, you're going to come and grab my watch? Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would imagine a lot of those Rolls Royces had Yeah, exactly. That's, that's true. So maybe it's just understood. Like if you're, if you're going to come up, you're you better don't bring a paddock yeah, to a gunfight. <laughs> 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 that could be our new rap song. <laughs> yeah, it could. Oh my god. Okay. Um here's a big here's a big issue uh when it comes to, you know, there's crime, there's logistics issues, there's all these different things. I have another one to throw in the pile. New York City bagel shops. Um are seeing a cream cheese. That's shortage. unbelievable. To Seems me. like a catastrophe. Add it to the I'll list. I'll tell you the other day. New York's not safe I either. I went and got a um, bagel at Sam's Bagel on Sunset. Might and, get robbed. Uh, Give me your cream cheese. <laughs> shortage. <laughs> <laughs> the other, the, the other bagel York shops are just, they're just sticking They're robbing people. up. Sam's Bagel's going to Western <laughs> Bagel and say, Give me all your fucking cream cheese. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> Yeah, Anyone got watch. any chives in their cream cheese? I need those too. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's up for robbery. From cream cheese to Rolex. Well, the problem is, is there's a supply chain shortage. <laughs> yeah. Either way, you're running short. Either in the in the store or outside the store, you're gonna get shortchanged. <laughs> yeah. What so that's it's a supply chain issue that's blocking all the cream cheese. Where's cream cheese come from? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Is there like a cream cheese capital of the world that is having trouble? It's like trouble? the Willy Wonka of, of cream cheese. I mean, isn't it like, I thought it'd come from like Minnesota or something. You just, it's you it said problems? that uh, 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 the unprocessed and unwhipped raw base used by shops to come up with different flavors. That's like the pro- part that's uh, mm. there's a shortage of. But like supply chain is like across the board, right? Like, you're, it starts at the manufacturing level with equipment. Like, oh, there's less, there's less equipment. There's, there's uh, you know less packaging. There's less ingredients. There's less. Yeah, there's just so many issues. In the in the article, it also says there's a chicken tender shortage coming. <laughs> I mean, they're hitting us right, you know, right in our most beloved. By the way, item. speaking of uh, food, Jack of the Box bought Del Taco. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, interesting. I'm a big Del Taco fan. Recently? Yes, years ago, yeah. Yes, sir. You're a fan of Del Taco. Do you know how much? Fifty million. Was it that low? Yeah, it was under five hundred million. What a brand! I'm surprised. I mean, if I was a billionaire. That's a gr- you could own Del Taco for half a billion yeah. dollars. I mean, yeah, just, I mean, one of those crypto dorks. Yeah. Why don't they just buy it? They probably imagine, ate so much Del Taco. Yeah. Growing up. Think about. <laughs> imagine you're like drunk next year at Coachella and you own Del That's Taco. That's a flex. Just, That's a I mean, flex. if you're telling me Del Taco and Hundred Thieves are worth the same. Hmm. Yeah, we got. So, a what would you there. rather own, Del Taco? Yeah, me too. You can NFT that <laughs> breakfast burrito. I'd buy one. Dude, Del Taco is one uh, <laughs> yeah, one yeah. collab with pick your favorite rapper away from being the hottest thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah, Del Taco could like hire, you know, the marketing director. Cheese from fries. Taco cheese Bell. fries by Baby about, Keem. Like, if you think about... I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know who runs Del Taco, if the founders involved or whatever, but... It's, it's Dell. logistically. Dell. Old Dell, do you know how original. hard it is to run a Del, like to build out a franchise of Del Tacos, H- hundreds of locations, hundreds of locations, supply chain. supply chain, all these different ingredients, make the food so quickly, and and yeah. you don't get rewarded. And then some fintech <laughs> schmuck, <laughs> yeah, doing fifty thousand a month is worth the same. Yeah, I mean, there's people worth the same with a concept <laughs> on a PDF. <laughs> Man, Del Taco. What is I feel deal? so bad for the entrepreneurs of 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. The old brick and mortar. Yeah. Game. I mean, Del Taco is such a phenomenal brand and business. And to be worth only $500 million is kind of sad. I mean, I don't know if which is geographic centric, but like every single person at USC, Del Taco is nostalgia. Well, think about it like this. Del Taco, if a Del Taco is in your neighborhood, I know it's more of a Western uh, states concept. Has 100% awareness. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I'll tell you, like, it was very clear in high school. You want to go catch a fight? You just go to Del Taco and watch <laughs> the parking lot. And same thing in college. Really? There's fights in the parking lot inside. Maybe that's hurting their valuation. <laughs> Maybe that's <laughs> part, part of, of like, it was like a, UFC should have bought it. Jake UFC should have bought Del Taco. <laughs> it was like a known <laughs> yeah, thing yeah. at our high school. <laughs> that's how you find your, that's how you do yeah. scouting. I would walk home from our high school. Or we live like three blocks away from our high school. Stop in the Del Taco parking lot. Catch rock, a fight. Catch a fight. Pick up some food and go home. <laughs> Great breakfast burritos. <laughs> well, there, that's how it's only five. My mouth million. is literally watering at the fact of death. I know. I'm going to eat Del Taco tonight. <laughs> it's so oh fucking good. God. Oh, man. Okay. Um, here's another one. Did you guys see? I didn't really catch, like, why? Is it because he wasn't happy with his nominations or what? But Drake withdrew his... Grammy nominations for so next year. No, no comments have been given by the Grammys or Drake's team. I'm going to f- go on and speculate my reasons. That's why we have a podcast. Okay, yes. yes. Is my yep, so my speculate. first speculation is I think uh, it's a power move that ultimately an artist like Drake, he basically doesn't do interviews, doesn't do talk shows, doesn't do press. He doesn't need the fucking Grammys. He's the biggest artist, you know, in his genre. So he's like, I don't really care. I'm just going to take the power out of them. And I'm not going to, I don't want to be a part of it. I think that's one reason. I think second, I think he's, besides the Larry Hoover concert he's doing Thursday in LA. I think the post Travis Scott thing, he just doesn't want to be places. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. But when are the Grammys? Aren't they like... A long no, time, it's like oh. less than two months away. Yeah, that's and true. so I have a feeling like those two are just trying to maintain a low profile. I mean, Thursday is not going to be a low profile. Thursday is as high profile as it gets. It's also a good point. So counters exactly what you said. I know that, but but it's for a cause, right? So it's it's to help somebody. Um, interesting thing about that Thursday, which you know I was looking forward to going, and then I realized we have dinner plans with you guys. On and Amanda. Oh, you're going Which, to dinner with us over Kanye and Drake? I didn't want to say it because wow. Haley got pissed, what but I wanted to go to the concert. I'm shocked. <laughs> you go to the concert. Uh, you, I, you, you know what, with Haley. You, 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 know, you know what the problem is? It's going to rain. And I don't want to be in the college. That's when the real rain. reason. <laughs> There's no way D would have gone to dinner with us. I didn't want to. Wait, because why? Because it's raining? Yeah, it's going to rain Thursday. Uh, hey, dude, that place is going to be... No, so that's the yeah, real reason. That's the real reason. <laughs> 
Scotty. <laughs> I love that you were like, you literally said to Anand, like, I'm going to go to dinner with you instead. And then you gave two reasons why <laughs> it's out of your control because you would do anything to go to the concert. Can you imagine D mosh pit? Because yeah. that's got to be one big mosh pit. Oh, uh, how much? Definitely the Kanye part from what you yeah, say. The, yeah. There's just going to be kids just doing this, like the church thing. Yeah, with their it's arms a beautiful up. morning. That was with the DJ playing <laughs> it. Imagine if Jesus was performing in front of you. Yeah, oh, it's me nuts. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see. I, I, I want to say my speculation, I just want to throw it in there in case it comes out. I hope I can say I'm right. Is I feel like he like wasn't nominated for something he felt like he should have been. And so he said, fuck you to the whole thing. I thought that I, I thought oh, that's what okay. it looked like, but I could be totally that's wrong. That's interesting. Because he does have like a, what I don't get is someone else, um, I think YK Osiris, who's like a young artist, went to his house recently and like was posting and he has like a whole like trophy room dedicated to his Grammys and all of his awards. So you can't tell me he doesn't care at all. That's interesting. We'll see. Um, okay. Next up, Elon Musk, back at it again. Beefing, starting trouble with, uh, you know, prominent people. This time, he went straight to the top. Joe Biden yep. is getting the smoke from yep. Elon. What's going on? I mean, I know the government, like, shines Elon, which I don't understand why. Uh, you guys might know. But, you know, they celebrate electric vehicle companies and they exclude Tesla. They do all this crazy stuff. Um, is that part of why? Or what's Elon no, pissed about now? This is very obvious. So, the build... Back Better Act, which has passed in the House and about to go to the Senate, includes tax incentives of up to twelve thousand five hundred for vehicles built by auto worker union members to increase demand in electric uh. vehicles. Okay. And the Biden administration would reinstate a seventy five hundred dollar federal credit for Tesla. He won. Already, right? He's so far ahead. He got all the subsidies already. He's already the winner. Why would he want his competition to now get increased subsidies, especially union-backed automakers, to get those subsidies? So he's playing the game. He's saying, oh, it's going to waste money. Why bankrupt the federal government? No, this is increased competition. If you give $12,500 tax incentive to, to auto union-based uh, car companies, people are going to buy those cars. They're going to take away from him. That's why he's saying it. I don't believe he actually gives a fuck about the deficit. That's probably true, but I think it's also their Tesla's workforce isn't unionized. Yeah. And the other auto workers are. Yeah. And so the Biden administration is supporting the unionized workers. Well, they're giving him seventy five hundred. They're just not give, they're giving everyone else twelve thousand five hundred. So he's like and he doesn't need the tax credit anymore. His business is on fire. But he had it for a very long time. Yeah, but he got I built Elon, by subsidies. Sure. I think Elon's different. I really don't think he cares about money. I think he cares about competition. He, he's a, yeah, he's an extremely competitive guy. Bezos yeah. all the time. Yeah, I think that's what he's worried about. By the way. I think it's only a competition thing. Yeah. More than a cash By thing. the way, Rustin posted this whole thing on Twitter how Tesla's the worst car company ever. Uh, he waited three months for his car. Then his car broke down. And he's just pissed off at them. Yeah. Tesla, you said? He said, I. Well, go buy a Rivian. <laughs> go find one. <laughs> <laughs> if you put a bunch of. Yeah, I do think they have a lot a, of problems. A lot of people are pissed. Like, they if have Elon. Little, little things. Uh, would he get the same, like, Jesus hands, like Kanye's fans, if he were to do, like, a oh, yeah. Coachella type? Like, I'm just going to so, talk yeah. for 30 minutes at Coachella and everyone just puts their hands up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, I think people would, like, pass yeah. out. So. He's like Michael Jackson like for the dorks. <laughs> I don't know. I think cool people are obsessed with them too. I don't even think dorks yeah. anymore. I think fucking jocks love Elon. I bet you the same kids shopping at the hottest Fairfax stores love e Tesla. Yeah, because like I think if you're a young person, like like Arjun uh, who works with us, his he's like he got unfortunately got into a car accident recently, and he was like, I I you know you know totaled my dream car, and I didn't know what he drove, and it was a Tesla. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, he's a 20-something-year-old person, and his dream car was Tesla. Mine was always, like, a Ferrari or a Aston Martin or whatever, like, some, some sports car. Young people today, their dream car is a Tesla. Like, you want a computer yeah. on wheels? 
that's, that's your true. dream car? I think that's a lot of people. Yeah. What happened to a good old Lambo? I think a lot of people. That's, that's their crypto. Dream car. A lot of young crypto people. world's Lambo. <laughs> yeah, they're that's part of the memes. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the Tesla yeah. is like the yeah. It's like the dream car that you could. It's accessible. Accessible. Like yeah. anyone can get one because they're like four hundred dollars a month now. Yeah. Exactly. Is that your dream car too? Yeah, hundred percent. Really? I've been very vocal, telling people like I'm gonna get a Tesla before twenty seven. Wow. Which one? Model Y would be nice with the butterfly doors, but you know we'll see. Model nice. Y is the the big one. Yeah, like the egg shaped. Yeah, the big SUV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's expensive. Yeah, I know. But not the X. The X is or bigger. maybe it's the X. I'm thinking. You of. you you like the the the, the X is the okay. biggest. The Model Y is the the smaller SUV. Oh, okay. The X is what Jaleel yeah. has. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. Probably the X. The there. Y is a little bit smaller. Yeah. And how old are you now? Twenty five. You have two years to go to Tesla. Two years. You want, and if you want the that one, that's probably what fifteen hundred a month. Yeah, I think it's like a hundred k. Yeah. Wow, it's that expensive. Well, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, I think it's like sixteen hundred a month. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Well, you can get that. Yeah. You just just live in there. The one's, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the He's boot. just living in the car. This is my dream house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be your dream car and dream house. <laughs> um, what about uh, seeing on social? Do you guys have anything you saw on social media? that? You yeah, I saw about? the better.com CEO. He's getting a lot of shit. He um, announced layoffs for, I think, 900 employees uh, via Zoom. And I heard like that. Yeah, that was a weird. Why is that weird though? Approach. I'm having a hard time understanding why he's because, getting so much shit. How else do you want him to do it? He at least did it. It's not like he sent out an email. How do you win in that situation? I think how many employees? How many employees did he get rid of? Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. Instead of making a joke, I think what was more weird to me because I think 900. I was going to say call individually, but um, not 900 people. Um, I think it just looked weird. Like, I think it just looked weird. Like, I think it just looked, uh, it didn't look, it just looked fucking No, it's because that's all. That's he had my just really, raised 750 complaint. million bucks days prior. Yeah. But that so, was probably, the, that like was this? probably the stipulation. So fire him the week before. Maybe the, it was contingent. That's how the close happened. Last minute, the, the investors came in and said, Get rid of these 900 people and we'll give you the money. And so he had no choice. He's going to look like the bad guy no matter what, which I get. But I just don't know if you, if, if you, if you have a gun to your head and you have to get rid of 900 people, like how do you do that in a way that doesn't get people angry? Yeah. yeah I, agree. I don't even I mean, know what but, they do. But it's like viral. Better. Well, they need to do better, whatever they do. <laughs> Yeah, my comment was just the way that he kind of came in and sat down. It just looked strange. Like, even like, why not just do this? Like, do what everyone does on Zoom. It was like this weird, I'm looking at it now. It was like this weird, like, sit down at a desk. I just didn't like it. You know what? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, well, anyway, well, it went viral and uh, that sucks. Because either way, I will say either way, you know, I doubt this guy is just like a crazy psycho, money hungry, whatever. And man, I just can't imagine like having to make this tough decision and 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 do it, and then it goes viral that you're like this asshole. <laughs> you know, like imagine like Menlo CEO D Murphy <laughs> fires. Like imagine that being like a viral oh, yeah, story. Yeah, that's, that would suck. That's so why bad. I was kind of struggling with like I get I understand the fundraising was it was bad optics and all that stuff. I just I don't think he can win. I, I maybe he shouldn't have done it on video. Just been the dick that just sent the message and be done with it. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's a tough one. Um, Anand, what about you? It's more of a question because I haven't seen it on social. Is the Ghislaine Maxwell trial? Yeah, because mainstream media is yeah, hiding like why it. why you haven't? Yeah, why aren't we? Because all the mainstream media CEOs were down at that island. I mean, just look at the amount of White House references with Bill Clinton, Donald Trump. There's so much... There's too much heat on too many people, so they just don't cover it. They, I'll t- you could you could get your algorithm popping on TikTok. There's a there's a there's a Gislaine talk. Okay, okay. If you can get the algorithm popping, they're giving updates. I think Candace Owens also like spoke out about it. I mean, it's people are trying, but it's definitely not getting the mainstream. It's definitely getting throttled coverage, in the mainstream. Like you go on CNN.com, 
I didn't see it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's there. It's just not on TV, and I, I don't think it's a it's a main focus because I think, frankly, I think it's there's too many powers that be are going to make sure that that story does not make it to the top of the news. It's not going to be pretty whatever yeah. comes out of this trial. No, no, but I'm really curious. I mean, this <laughs> this is essentially like as close as we'll ever get and pretty damn close to like a Jeffrey Epstein trial. Yeah. I mean, it might even be better because, you know, like you're getting testimony yeah. and shit. I don't know. It, it definitely is not, optically um, doesn't look like uh, people are being transparent. Let me tell you what's even bigger not on the mainstream media is Jussie Smollett is on trial. Currently. Yeah, because the mainstream media stood up for him and now they don't want to look like an idiot. Yeah. I mean, it's on Fox every day, but not on... <laughs> By the way, the trial on, is batshit crazy. The stuff that is coming out of the testimonies, it is fucking oh, wild. Why you... I'm so excited. <laughs> I haven't really got the download yeah, yet. Yeah, I mean, that would be a great five series TikTok of just breaking down the trial. It's insane yep. what is being said in this trial. I don't even want to repeat it. It's still fucking nuts. Oh, I can't wait. Okay. Um, mine is, you know what mine is? I just see right now as I'm scrolling through my YouTube, uh, on and your boy, uh, Matt Taibbi was on Rogan. Mm. Oh, wow. Today. Any, any clue on what they're talking about? No, but I see here something about what the media got wrong about Kyle Rittenhouse. Um, I saw Kyle Rittenhouse... Bill Gates has given three hundred million to media to mainstream media. Uh oh, seems like some good topics in okay, here. Okay, okay. So that'll be my listen today. All right. Yeah, I can't wait for the Jesse Smollett rundown, man. And there's so many people like on video and like uh, he just duped so many yeah. people. Kamala Harris. Yeah. I'm impressed. Well, can't wait. Yeah, hey, he pulled it off yeah. almost. Um. That's, That's all we it. got. Okay. Thank you guys for listening. See you Thursday.